Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, once again, and welcome to the 2016 Census official multicultural campaign launch in our wonderful state of New South Wales. This is also a bit of a, a national launch as well, and it's really lovely to see so many of you have taken the time out from your morning to join us here. You obviously understand the importance of this big event. My name's Janice Peterson. I'm a presenter on SBS World News, but if I look around the crowd, I can see we've got some very smart, engaged, intelligent people. So I know that you know who I am. Yeah, I know that you tune in at 6.30 each weeknight to watch myself and Anton and our team of stable, our, our stable of, of talented journalists deliver the best world news, the best national news each weeknight. I know that some of you also tune in on a weekend to watch my colleague Lee Lin Chin's outfits. And that's okay too. As long as you're watching SBS World News, it's fine by me. Now I'd like to firstly acknowledge the Camaragal people of the Gurungai Nation who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet this morning. I'd also like to pay my respects to elders both past and present and future of the Gurungai Nation. Well folks, this year's census is our one in five year opportunity to stand up and be counted. It's an opportunity to get a snapshot of where we're at and who we are. Now, every single one of you is an important part of that process. And I think a lot of us from non-English speaking backgrounds in particular feel that sometimes there's a little bit of a struggle to be heard for a whole range of reasons. And the 2016 census is our chance, it's our important chance to be heard loud and clear. The Australian Bureau of Statistics has decided to focus on our wonderful multicultural community this year because it is so rich and diverse. And also because I think that language and cultural barrier sometimes means that we don't get to find out just how rich and diverse our nation is. Now the census needs to be completed properly to find that out. To be blunt, there'll inevitably be a portion of people in the community that think that the census is a time-consuming document, that it's tedious, and that it's, I guess, swallowing up too much of our already precious time. But I'm here today to tell you that I strongly disagree with that. And here's why. I also feel like I, I mention my heritage a lot when I speak publicly, but you know what, I think it's a relevant thing to reflect on. My parents came to Australia from South Africa in the early 70s, before I was born. They were fortunate enough to escape the oppressive apartheid regime at a time when they were lucky enough, they were fortunate enough to be welcomed into this incredible country of Australia. In South Africa, the home that they loved so much, they weren't equal. They were judged on the colour of their skin. They were treated in a certain way because of how they looked. You are probably well aware of some of the, the terrible things that happened to people back then under that regime. The horrific violence, the mistreatment, the many, many examples of painful injustice. So I don't need to do a roll, roll call of that sort of thing. What you might not know, though, is the excruciatingly small details that the, that awful regime went to to limit people's freedom. For example, the very famous children's storybook about a horse that I'm sure you're familiar with called Black Beauty. There it is. It looks uh, pretty innocuous. Well, that book was banned because those two terms, black and beauty, were deemed to be mutually exclusive. Nothing, not even a, an animal could, could be black and beautiful, let alone a person, so it had to be banned. This was a country where there was an official attempt to ban the peace sign, because I guess that would mean 
that all of us would be considered equal and that we should be treated the same. So there, imagine wanting to ban that. And that was obviously something that needed to be snuffed out. So for me, growing up in Australia, I was lucky enough to be protected from all of that, but it was drilled into me from a very young age that voting in a de democratic election was something to be celebrated, something to be cherished, and to have an equal voice was a powerful and wonderful thing. And that yes, really it's a human right to have that sort of freedom, but it's also a tremendous privilege to live in a country that provided something like a census, something where everyone's given an equal voice, where the collection of personal data was not carried out to use against you, but to build a stronger and better country for every single one of us. So for me, not taking care to complete your census properly is not an option. To me, not completing your census properly is basically saying equality and fairness, well, you know what, it's no big deal. It's okay that some of us fall by the wayside and don't have a voice. That's not okay. So I'm calling on you all here today to help, to galvanise your communities, to assist people who need it to stand tall and be counted. They deserve it as much as you do. So don't disappoint me, ladies and gentlemen. Please get out there and encourage people to have their voice heard. Now, here's some interesting tidbits about our census. It's the 17th census conducted. The first one was uh, developed by the Commonwealth Bureau of Statistics way back in 1911. The Australian population at that stage was a little shy of four and a half million. As you'd expect, Australia's population has exponentially exploded in that time, uh, about five times that number over the past 105 years. So we're sitting at 24,139,199, but I bet it's probably gonna be a bit more than that after this next census. So next month's census will potentially be the largest online event in Australia's history. It's a pretty momentous event to be a part of. That's pretty exciting. And I'm here to tell you that that probably means it's even bigger than the SBS Eurovision vote. Yeah, it's that big. And get your head around this. It's the largest peacetime operation ever undertaken in Australia. It's huge. Now in 2006, for the first time, respondents were given the opportunity to complete the census online. So um, that was called the e-census, and of course, people could do that in, um, as an alternative to the traditional paper-based version, and over 720,000 households chose to do it that way. As we know, our love of online everything has exploded too over the recent years, so this year's census will be a digital first. That means that about two thirds of the population will complete the census online. And I think that's a really exciting thing because it obviously streamlines the process and means that we'll get some of those results a lot faster and that's, that's exciting for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to tell you we have some very important people attending today's launch, the Honourable John Ajaka, New South Wales Minister for Ageing, New South Wales Minister for Disability Services. And yes, I can see that uh, today, in fact, he's wearing his hat as Minister for Multiculturalism. So welcome. Mr Harkin Harmon, Chair of Multicultural New South Wales is also here. Peter Dukas, Chair of the Ethnic Communities Council of New South Wales is here. Mary Carras, CEO of the Ethnic Communities Council, is here. Duncan Young, the Census Program Manager at ABS, is here. Mandy Wicks, Director of SBS Radio, is here. And might I say, also, a huge welcome to every single one of you. Thank you so much once again for coming, because you're all VIPs in my eyes as well. 
Well, let's get more of an appreciation of the history of this momentous event we're about to take part in next month. And let's uh, catch a short clip now called Making Sense of the Census. <laughs> Nine is census night. It's a moment for every one of us to pause and play a role in shaping the future of Australia. But what is the census and how does it work? Well, it's officially called the Census of Population and Housing. And it's all about getting a detailed snapshot of every person and household in Australia on one night. Uh, the whole household, please. It's the Australian Bureau of Statistics' biggest and most important collection of data because what we learn in the census can benefit everybody. It helps when planning things like roads, parks, hospitals, schools, transport and infrastructure. So it's really important that everyone participates. Get online on August 9. It's our moment to pause and make a difference. Visit the census website anytime for more information. So that's easy to remember, isn't it? Get online on August 9. Don't forget that. Well, it's now my great pleasure to introduce Duncan Young, Census 2016 Program Manager. Now, uh, Duncan is the national head of the 2016 census. He's had over a decade of experience in statistical and technical leadership roles at the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Duncan has also worked internationally and provided advice on censuses in, well, all over the world, New Zealand, Vietnam, Myanmar and the UK. Duncan will give us a bit more of an insight into why it's so important that we uh, hear the voice of our multicultural community. So, thank you, Duncan. Thank you, Janice. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome, Honourable Minister, Mr Harmon, Mr Dukas, um, Ms Wicks, and all of our esteemed guests here this morning. 13 sleeps until census night. Um, if, if everyone's not counting down yet, please join me in the countdown to Census Night. At ABS, we get pretty excited about Census Night. It's, um, census Night is sort of like Christmas, a birthday, and New Year's Eve all rolled into one. Like a Christmas, we look forward to it from a long time um, in the future. Like a birthday, we get a wonderful gift of the data about out Australia. And like New Year's Eve, it leaves us with a sore head and it takes a while to recover. So welcome, welcome to this multicultural um, briefing and launch um, today. So on Tuesday, August 9, we're asking Australians to take a moment to pause, complete the census and truly make a difference for Australia. The census will tell the story of Australia's 24 million people who come from over 200 different countries, who speak over 300 different languages, who have over 100 different beliefs, who work in over 1,000 different occupations, who live in close to nine and a half million different homes. The census will show how we've changed as a nation over the last five years and the increasing diversity of our population. As was reported in a number of newspapers today, it might show Sydney's population cracking the five million mark for the first time. Sydney's been growing by nearly 1,600 people a week since the last census. And so the census will show us a picture of how that our community here in Sydney has changed. Australia uh, will probably have more than 50% of our population in this census which were either born overseas or have one of their parents that were born overseas. This census will be appearance of, of new occupations, the first time ever we've counted Uber drivers, and the census will show an ageing population in Australia. So a census is critical for Australia it sets our electoral boundaries. It's used for distributing government funding across the country. But it's also used, very importantly, for the planning of services for our communities. Health, education, 
and transport, housing and all of our infrastructure is informed by the data that we collect from a census. In order to show an accurate picture of Australia and every community in Australia, it's crucial that everyone participates in the census. We've been working to make this census the easiest census ever, with more options available for households than ever before. So we've designed an online form which has a focus on being very, very fast, very, very easy and very, very secure. We expect that some 16 million people will be counted online this census. Counted online using their smartphones, counted online using their tablets, counting online using their, their desktop computers. This makes this clearly the most significant online event and probably the largest online event that Australia's ever had. We'll also be making paper forms available for anyone that needs one. The most important thing is that everyone in Australia is counted on August 9. Even with two thirds of the country going online this census, the ABS needs to recruit some 38,000 field officers across the country to make sure that everyone's included in the count. These staff visit households after census night to provide assistance where people need it to complete the census form or to provide them with a reminder of the value of a census and the, the criticality of their response. Staff will also be employed to support specific populations. Staff employed to interview the homeless. Staff employed to travel to remote old Aboriginal communities to provide interviews and support services and local or translations to support the aged and to work with our multicultural communities right across the country. Staff, of these 38,000 staff have been deliberately employed from a diversity of backgrounds. A number of people in this room have helped us reach out and advertise as our census roles in recent months and so thank you for that. We've managed to recruit a large number of people who are bilingual and multilingual and will be able to support the census on the ground as we connect with every household across our beautiful country. Connecting and engaging with people from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds has been at the forefront of planning for this 2016 census. Across the country we've engaged with and built relationships with key agencies and peak bodies. Ultimately the way I see it is that people don't want to listen to some bloke from Canberra telling them why a census is important for their community. It's much more important and much more valuable for someone that they know to tell them and explain to them why they're participating in the census, as Janice did for us earlier today. In New South Wales, a number of you have been active already in supporting us, so thank you for that. Um, I know that a number of you are here today, but the Ethnic Community Councils of New South Wales, Multicultural New South Wales, the Australian Chinese Community Association of New South Wales, the Chinese Australian Services Society, Glenwood Sikh Temple, or the Parramatta Community Migrant Resource Centre, SBS, like to, uh, I could pretty much step through the invitation list from today and list you all because I know that you all believe in the census and you've all stepped up to help us this year. Earlier this year, the ABS also appointed Ogilvy's Multicultural Communications Agency, ECCOM, to help drive awareness and participation in the 2016 census among Australia's culturally and linguistically diverse communities. With the support of these organisations and assistance with ECCOM, we've connected with communities right across Australia. So we've been having face-to-face -face meetings throughout this year, helping people understand how the census is coming and help us hear from communities what support they need to make sure that there's an accurate census count. Through this engagement, we've talked a lot about the value of completing the census. But what we've tried to do is empower community leaders to take responsibility to, to work within their communities to support the census and drive participation. Like in previous censuses, we encourage and support communities to support their own people. Through formal fill in the form sessions where people come together and support each other in understanding the census form and in this census also helping each other get online and showing people how, to, how easy it is to complete online, but also providing more informal, individual, one-on-one -on -one support. We thank all of these organisations and communities, which include all of you here today.
An important part of us spreading the census message will be the broad suite of in-language advertising materials that ECOM have helped us prepare. So for the 2016 census, there will be television, radio and print ads in over 35 languages, posters and brochures translated into 25 languages, social media content translated into 25 languages, the informative videos for making sense of a census, which are very useful nowadays in being able to communicate with people through social media and online channels, have been translated into six languages and all of those different versions are on our, our YouTube channel. All of these different language materials will be supported by the translator and interpreter service, which supports over 150 languages. We're expecting to handle some 60,000 phone calls from, from people across Australia who will take advantage of those translator and interpreter services to support through the census. So lots of preparation and lots and lots of preparation. We're both um, tired but excited as we approach our big day. But there's one most important step left for all of us. And that most important step is firstly to complete our own census, get online on August 9 and fill out our census. But secondly, to go away and think, what can I do for my family? What can I do for my community? What can I do for the people of Sydney to help support them in filling out the, the census? So for me, I'm going to be calling up my grandparents, giving them a buzz and saying, hey, I want you to be part of the Australians who complete the census online this time. Why don't I help you with that? And so with an online census, I don't have to fly down to Tasmania and pick up their paper form. I, need to, I can talk to them over the phone and help them make sure that they're counted and counted online. And so, so that's the challenge for us, is let's make sure that this census is not only the biggest online event, let's make sure that this census isn't just the largest peacetime logistical event in Australia's history. Let's make sure that this census produces the best ever data set from this census, which we'll all rely on over the next five years as we plan, as we deliver services, as we build this nation of Australia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Duncan. It uh, was really good, again, to, to hear why it's so important that we not only fill out the census properly ourselves, but where we can to assist others who might need our help. Well, now it's time to introduce, once again, this time you'll see him, for real, not just making his way to his seat, but uh, Minister for Multiculturalism here in our great state of New South Wales, Mr John Ajaka. Thank you, Janice, for that uh, lovely introduction. Can I also take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and pay my respects uh, to Elders past and present? Uh, Janice, you mentioned a key word about voice uh, when it comes to the census. Uh, as you can see or hear, I've actually lost my voice. Um, that happens when you're a father of six daughters and you spend the weekend with them. For some reason, you, I tend to lose my voice when I do that. Can I, I've left my speech behind because I believe much of what has been, uh, what I was going to say has been said, but I thought if I could give you from my perspective as, firstly, the son of uh, migrants who came here in 1950 from Lebanon, and also in my capacity as not only Minister for Multiculturalism, but the Minister responsible for disability services, ageing, youth and volunteering. The reality is this. When it comes to providing services as a government, when you want to ensure that you provide the right services to the right community groups, you need the information of who the groups are, what the groups need, where the groups are located. That is absolutely fundamental, and that's what the census does, as indicated by Duncan. It provides not only government, but non-government organisations, communities, and individuals that imported information to understand who 
we are, where we are, and what we need. So whether you're talking transport, education, health, any other area, we're talking interpreting services, this is the information we need. On day one of becoming Minister for Multiculturalism, just over a year ago, I immediately went to the ABS to examine a number of factors. And they were heard today by Duncan. But the reality for me was on day one, I learned. We come from over 225 different places of birth. We come and worship over 125 different religious beliefs. We speak over 200 languages. These are the stats we need to understand when we put together the government policies. I'm proud of the fact that Multicultural New South Wales indicates that we provide language services, the largest number of language services, but we need to continue to grow that and it's the information from the census that allows us to do that. There are a number of features of this census that I'm very pleased to see. As Minister for Ageing, I'm aware that our seniors can actually undertake the census online. People with disability, with either vision impairment or hearing impairment, can undertake this census knowing that the additional aids are being provided. Those where English is not their principal language, we heard 25 different languages, uh, interpretations are provided. Again, this is imperative to ensure that we obtain the right information. I'm looking forward to seeing the census. Now, Duncan, you indicated it's like Christmas. I thought about that analogy for a moment, but you're right. I mean, if you think about our children coming to us, telling us what they want for Christmas, what they need for Christmas, it's that information that assists us. Well, the reality is, if you're part of a community that needs assistance in one form or another, what a better way to bring that information to us than through the census. Because you cannot blame government or community for not providing information, for not providing the services if we don't receive the information from you first as to who you are, what you are, where you come from, what you need. Again, I was intrigued when I first learned over a year ago that we come, that 50% of us, almost 22, come, were born overseas or have one parent who was born overseas. And I'm one of those 50%. Both my parents were born overseas. And again, that is vital information. So, because of the one in two, we need to ensure each and every one of you here today helps spread the message. Because ABS cannot do it on its own. We as government cannot do it on our own. It does require that partnership between government and non-government, between organisations and communities to ensure that the right message goes out so we complete this. So congratulations to each and every one of you and thank you for the opportunity today of being here. And Janice, I love SBS News, you know that. And my wife works for Channel 9 and I still say I love SBS News. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much, Minister. I certainly hope that you talk to your, some, of, some of your federal counterparts and make sure that the funding doesn't dry up, that we increase the coffers, if we can... <laughs> but... We certainly appreciate your support. Thanks so much. And again, for highlighting in a really powerful way just how important it is that we all get behind this census, that we get online on August 9 and we help those who need our assistance because it's people like the Minister and his cohort who will use this information to deliver services where they need to go. Next, it's my great pleasure to introduce a colleague of mine, Mandy Wicks. She's the director of SBS Audio and Language Content at SBS Radio. She's been with us here for nearly six years. SBS Radio, for those of you who don't know, includes radio, uh, eight radio networks, five which focus on Australian news and information in language services and three music networks. Mandy today will discuss 
how the census data is really critical to developing SBS's uh, radio content strategy. So I certainly look forward to that. Thanks, Mandy. I think I'm the shortest here, so I'll just pull that down. Well, good morning and welcome to SBS. Um, I too would like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that we meet on today, the special land, uh, and pay my respects to the elders past and present. Uh, welcome, Honourable Minister Ajaka, special guests, everybody here. We're delighted that we are hosting the New South Wales multicultural launch for census this year. And can I just say, SBS loves the census. We love it, don't we? I can see all the SBS staff nodding furiously. And I'll kind of tell you why. It's the number one population tool in this country. And so we use the data constantly for insights into communities, and in particular, multicultural communities. Our purpose at SBS is to inspire all Australians to explore, appreciate, and celebrate our diversity. And by doing so, we want to inspire social cohesion. So the Census 2016 is going to provide an accurate picture of today's Australia. And so that data will directly influence our strategies, but also the stories that we tell here at SBS. And so let me share a few examples. The Census for us is going to trigger a review of the SBS radio schedule. And we're currently broadcasting in 70 plus languages. And following the last Census, we added six new languages including Swahili, Dinka, Tigrinya, Hmong, Malayalam, and Pashto. The new data is going to help us understand which languages are being spoken in Australia and the size of those language communities. And we also use other data to understand the needs of the communities in Australia. Last time we used the household income data, we used the recentness of arrival, we used ageing, and we also used the English language proficiency data. And what we were able to do from that was to create an index of all communities in Australia in order to understand those who need our services most, in order to understand the community in which they now live and to be able to have a voice in the community in which they now live. The census data is used by all the content teams across SBS. It's used by the news and current affairs team. It's used by our documentary makers. It's used by SBS Radio, of course, um, but also online. And last time, the online team created the SBS Census Explorer, which we're planning to do again. And it's a fantastic tool online where anyone in Australia can explore the census data. So you can go in there and you can compare your neighbourhood to your friend's neighbourhood or your neighbourhood against the rest of the nation. And we've had hundreds of thousands of people visit that in the last five years. And for us, it's really interesting to see how the data has changed over time. For example, in 2006, Hindi was the 18th largest language spoken um, in Australia, but by 2011, it had become the eighth largest language spoken in Australia, which really influenced our services. Mandarin, for example, was the seventh largest language, apart from English, spoken in Australia in 2006. But by 2011, it was, of course, the number one language, which again influenced our services. With so many people speaking a language other than English, we are passionate about engaging all communities in this census. The ABS, you're doing a fantastic job um, of reaching out to all the communities, and SBS is, is and we will continue to actively promote full participation in the census. And we want to ensure that our audiences understand exactly what they need to do come census night. So some of the stories that we've already covered across our platforms include things like, what is the census and why do we do it? How to complete the census? 10 things to know about the census. Fast facts about the census. The move to be digital first this year. Is my census data safe? We've done a story about how the ABS has been doing information sessions in multicultural communities. And we've also done a story about the breakthrough in gender diversity in this census. For the census is recognising for the first time those who don't identify as being either male or female. So that was a good story for us to cover as well. And as you said, there are only two weeks to go. So for us, there's still endless possibilities about the content that we can cover. 
This called media launch, along with other similar launches interstate, really demonstrate, I think, the extra mile the ABS is going to, to ensure the highest participation rate and the most accurate results possible. And so for us at SBS, we very much look forward, like the Minister, to diving into those results next year uh, as soon as they're released with a flow on to our services and the sorts of stories and communities we'll be focusing on in the next five years. All the best. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mandy. And it is true, we do love the census here at SBS. I can certainly vouch for that. Thanks again for explaining just why it's so important for the work that we do here at SBS. And we certainly hope that a lot of you out there benefit from those results as well and that the services get to where they need to go. Well, next, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite to the stage a former colleague of mine, Lou Petrollo, Managing Partner of ETCOM. Now, ETCOM is one of the nation's leading specialist multicultural agencies. It's been operating for over 35 years, and Lou has had over 15 years' experience in that field of multicultural communications and also community engagement. He worked right across public and private sectors, most recently with the SBS audio and language content promoting its 74 language programs. He's here today to give us a deeper insight into the multicultural census campaign. Take it away, Lou. Thanks, Janice. Um, let me start by also acknowledging the traditional owners of the land and paying my respect to elders past and present. Um, Minister, thank you for your attendance and I thank you, Hakan, and all the other dignitaries that are here today for coming along. It's, um, it's a real pleasure to see you all here today. Um, ECOM has been um, privileged to be appointed as the CORD Communications Agency promoting the census campaign and it is a privilege to be part of a campaign that reaches and touches pretty, pretty much every Australian and in particular reaches every multicultural Australian or court community who requires these services. And for, from our perspective, it's been six months of hard work. I know you guys have been working on it for well, much longer than that, but um, the last, this is really the culmination of six months of hard work um, to come to a point where we are able to disseminate information to... Uh, I think over eight in 10 multicultural Australian communities. Um, obviously, from our perspective, this is a critical campaign. This is crucial to the future of um, Australia and it's crucial for court audiences to be recognised and acknowledged correctly. Uh, we know from our experience and our research with these communities, there are a lot of myths and misconceptions that often uh, shape their views or perceptions towards the, the census if they are uh, aware of that. So awareness is obviously the principal priority, but then also obviously dealing with a lot of those misconceptions or lack of awareness is crucial. So for example, um, we know that a lot of uh, uh, travellers, international students, um, 457 visa migrants are not aware that they are actually part of the census process. And uh, anyone who's in Australia on the census night Sh needs to be counted and should be counted. So it's been part of the pro our communications process to actually communicate some of that information. Um, in terms of the key messages, I mean, the key messages that are apply, are, apply to all audiences. So obviously, uh, we know the census is on the 9th of August. Um, and if we don't, please go out and, and, tell, and tell your family and friends. Um, it's compulsory. Uh, just like it's compulsory to vote in Australia, it's also compulsory to complete your census. And obviously, we want everybody to, to be counted. It's, it's our moment to, to get a real snapshot of the nation. Um, given the changes that have happened this year, the, the census is, is fast, it's more efficient, and it, there are more options, obviously, to complete, by, you know, either online or via paper. Uh, paper forms are available. We're aware that for a, lo a large number of our older co cold communities, an online form may or may not be um, an easy option, so paper forms are available. And a lot of the speakers have reiterated that privacy is obviously a, a major concern for a lot of communities. This uh, 
we can absolutely reassure our core communities, and we have been reassuring our core communities that privacy is paramount and will be maintained. So in terms of an overview of the, um, the ECOM multicultural um, campaign, we've been conducted um, you know, a complete suite of communications across all audiences. So obviously we're, we're here today for the launch event. We've also conducted similar briefings in, in Vic, South uh, Queensland and WA. Um, obviously working hand in hand with SBS has been an important part of our program. And engaging the multicultural media and getting the multicultural media to share these stories and distribute this information is absolutely critical to our strategy. Um, also, you know, obviously engaging uh, cord community ambassadors or, or, or supporters is a critical part of what we do. We know supporters have a, a tremendous influence and reach into their networks. So we've engaged 40 um, supporters across the country in every state and territory. Um, also, cord community organisations. So we know that those organisations, many of which are here today, uh, are critical as both support networks and also as messaging conduits. So we're using those to actually disseminate the information out to communities. And that process is underway and, and has been undertaken. Information will be supplied via information kits as well as digitally. Um, in addition, as, as was mentioned, we're, we're conducting uh, community workshops around the country. I've got my tireless team who, who uh, you were saying there's 13 sleeps to the census. Uh, for them, there won't be, there may be one between now and the census. So we'll be pretty much traveling around the country uh, engaging communities on the ground, helping to spread the word and, 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 and address some of these issues. Um, and of course, the supporting material. Now, uh, as was touched upon, we have posters and brochures in 25 languages and um, the web content, the uh, Making Sense of the Sense video, we have that translated in six languages, all four videos. So that was episode one, there's four episodes. And we also have um, obviously all the advertising material for all the communications platforms available in, uh, in up to 35 languages. I'd just like to point out that um, everyone who came in received a lanyard. On the back of the lanyard is a, is a card. That's actually a USB. So I, and the USB contains all the in-language information. So I urge you not to leave without that. Um, it contains all 25 languages, posters and brochures, all the stakeholder materials, media release from today. So please make sure you take one of those home today. Just very quickly, I just want to point out some of the uh, material that you'll be seeing over the, the coming weeks. Um, behind me is a copy of the letter that everyone will be receiving as of Monday. Um, this letter is critical. Um, it can, it's going out to every household in, uh, in Australia and it will contain a unique code. Now, I won't go into the details of how the letter and how the code should be applied. We have a raft of ABS representatives here today and I urge you after our session to go and, and speak with them and they will give you more information. But it's critical that you maintain the letter regardless of whether you're going to complete it online or whether, you're going to, whether you, you choose to actually ask for a paper form. And um, as you can see around the building and also over there on the table, here's some examples of some of the creative materials we, de we, we, we developed. They're an adaptation um, from the, the mainstream campaign and the wider campaign material. But um, as I said, they contain subtle messages and, uh, and nuances that are relevant to court audiences. So um, I urge you to, to grab, you know, take the USBs and grab the materials and share them. And just finally, for the multicultural media today, uh, you would have hopefully started to receive, if, if you haven't already, some of the, um, the press, radio and online materials, including social as well. Um, it's going to be a very intensive campaign over the next three or four weeks. So there'll be a, an approach phase, which is about getting awareness levels up. There'll be a messaging on census night to remind everyone to get online and complete. And there'll also be a follow-up phase at the end. Um, absolutely. I, it's pretty much going to be blanket coverage across most multicultural media as well as mainstream media. And just quickly to sum up, and it has been reiterated by the other, uh, the other speakers, it's absolutely critical that you walk away today informed, energised and, and passionate as you are about the census and you go out and spread the word amongst the communities, whether it you be through the multicultural media, through your community, your networks, through your family and friends. Uh, this is our once in fi five year opportunity to, to make sure that multicultural communities are, have a voice and are accurately reflected. So I urge you to go out there 
and, and spread the word. And um, thank you once again for your attendance. And um, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, come and see us afterwards. Thank you. Thank you once again, Lou, uh, for again highlighting the importance of uh, getting online on August 9. Uh, a huge thanks to all of our VIPs this morning. We've heard, some, heard from some really inspiring speakers. I think they've really hammered home the message of why the census is so important and why all of us need to stand up and be counted next month. Uh, it is imperative that you all get involved, as I said, and I guess that's why we're all here, right? We understand the importance of it. We're passionate about getting involved, and we're really calling on you to, to send that message home to your communities. We know that sometimes our smaller and special audiences can be underrepresented underrepresented and not properly reflected in the data. So we're really relying on you to find whatever platform you can, if it's through SBS language services, perhaps it might be through your social and media and community networks, but encourage people to fill out their census correctly and seek help if they have trouble doing so. It's really important, as we've heard, for the provision of services in the future. I don't want you to, to do this for a greedy motivation, but it's going to help all of us in the future if we properly complete the census next month. Folks, as Lou mentioned, please, the green lanyards are not around your neck for decorative purposes. They have some important information in there. As you'll see, the little card that's in that pocket contains a very clever USB stick, and that has a host of information uh, in all sorts of languages that's going to be useful and helpful to you and your communities. Well, thank you once again to all of our speakers, to the wonderful organisers today, the very hardworking team at the ABS, the Community Relations and the ALC team here at SBS, everyone at ETCOM, well done, Multicultural New South Wales, the Ethnic Communities Council of New South Wales and the New South Wales Government too for its support and to each and every one of you today for coming out and showing your support. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, stick around, get your photos taken. We've got a media wall over there. Uh, that's a good way to connect with other people uh, through your social media networks. Feel free to grab a bit more morning tea. It's a great chance to network with some other very passionate and energised people in the community. Uh, it's a nice um, gathering of people and a good opportunity to perhaps swap some of your details. It's been a great pleasure for me to host today's event. My name's Janice Peterson, and I will see you tonight at 6.30 on SBS, correct? Yes. Until then, happy census. Get online on August 9. Good day. <laughs>